Let's try to solve this problem here. A parcel is launched at an initial speed of 3 meters per second up a rough plane inclined at an angle of 35 degree above the horizontal. So if you like to sketch this situation, right? Um, this will be our horizontal. Then we have an inclined plane and this inclined plane is 35 degree. You have a parcel launched at an initial speed of 3 meters per second. So means by this parcel over here probably initially will be somewhere down the hill bad drawing okay initial speed 3 meter per second so means by initially it's moving upwards with 3 meter per second they use the word launch so most probably it's going upwards huh? okay or they say clearly up a rough plane okay so let's also say that this plane is rough because i think rough here is important because that means that there will be friction okay so is there did i miss anything no okay the coefficient of kinetic friction coefficient of kinetic friction between the parcel and the plane is 0 0.30 so we can say that mu k over here is equal to 0 0.30 okay so, so this will be in between this parcel and this surface the this pair of surface here they share this coefficient uh here which is 0 0.30 okay now they say determine the maximum distance traveled by the parcel up the plane means by this parcel over here will actually move up the plane and because we know that this plane is rough here so we know that this plane this parcel here will be slowing down while moving along this plane okay then at some point it will slow down to a stop so somewhere near the end it will be uh, somewhere up the hill but with zero meter per second because it has stopped okay so now they ask for the maximum distance well how should we solve this problem right okay they let us know the initial speed which is three meter per second and they also let us know the final speed which is zero meter per second so telling us the speed actually tells us a few things as well telling us speed can also mean that they are actually implying that they are giving us the kinetic energy as well so we actually we actually can determine the initial kinetic energy and the final kinetic energy so we know that the change in kinetic energy here will be equal to the total work done so if we try to sketch a free body diagram and try to determine the total work done we can actually use the total work done and relate it with the uh, total with the change of kinetic energy and that's work energy theorem and we can probably explore this approach to solve this problem why do i say i want to relate with uh with uh, work energy theorem or why do i want to relate change in kinetic energy with the total work done it's because from the total work done uh from there we can probably determine the maximum distance that is traveled by the parcel up the plane okay so let's try to give it uh let's try to uh, do something with it okay so how do we determine the total work done let's try to determine the free body diagram for this situation the free body diagram here we use the dot here to represent the parcel and we have our inclined plane okay so let's ask ourselves five questions does the parcel have mass yes it has mass therefore it has weight next is the parcel in uh, connected to any strings ropes or cable no it's not connected to any strings ropes or cable so no tension third question is there any force being explicitly mentioned in the question or being labeled explicitly in the diagram no they don't say that you push the block upwards they just say you launch so launch is something like a flick or something like a uh, a very very momentary momentarily push so that the thing is being launched upwards it is not being pushed along the way okay so in this case there's no external force fourth question is there any contact surface yes there is contact surface over here so normal force there'll be normal force contact surface perpendicular because that's normal perpendicular means by you be in this axis again the surface is pushing the parcel so it's being pushed upwards okay so you have normal force pointing upwards 
Okay, is the surface rough or not? Yes, the surface is rough. That's the fifth question. So because the surface is rough, there will be friction. And because it is sliding, we know that there is kinetic friction. So because the object is sliding upwards, that's what we know regarding this situation. It's sliding upwards. Therefore, we know that the kinetic friction will be pointing in the opposite direction to the sliding motion. So object is sliding upwards, so the kinetic friction will be pointing down the slope. So this will be FK. Okay, so we have asked ourselves the five questions. So technically, we have finished drawing all the forces for our free body diagram. Let's put in an angle. The angle 35 degrees over here. So we know that this will translate to this side of the free body diagram to be 35 degrees. Okay, how do we know? Um, uh, basically, this is the horizontal and this is 35 degrees. Okay, you can see that this will be a right angle triangle. So this will be uh, 55. And because this is also a right angle triangle, you can see that this will be 35. Okay, I'm just roughly labeling uh, just in case you don't see that why 50, 35 is being labeled over there. Okay, let me remove it not to confuse the situation. <laughs> Okay, so now uh, we have our free body diagram ready. To determine the total work done, as we have mentioned earlier, there's two different kinds of approach. One is to find the work done by all these three forces first. Once you find the work done by all these three forces, you add them up, then you find your total work done. But another method that we can use is to determine the net force first. So it means when you combine all the forces here to get the net force, after you get your net force, you use the net force to find the work done. Or you find the work done by the net force. Once you find the work done by the net force, that work done there will be the total work done. Okay, so for this case, I'm going to try the second method because we do the first method quite often. So let's try to find out the trends. Let's try to use the second method in which we find the X component and Y component of the net force first. We combine them to get the magnitude and direction of net force. Once we get the magnitude and direction of net force, we use uh, we use the work done formula to find the work done by the net force, and that will be the total work done. Okay, so let's uh, slowly uh, let me write down the steps. Okay, let's find some of fx and some of fy first. Okay, uh, before we find some of fx, some of fy, what we should do to this diagram is we should actually resolve all the forces that are not on the axis. So the only force that is not on the axis is weight. So we can resolve weight here to its x component and y component. This is its y component. This will be its x component. So 35 here, it's near the y component. It's far from the x component. So the 35 over here, cosine for the near part. So this will be W cos 35, whereas this one will be W sine 35. Okay. So once we have resolved ready, we can see that for the x axis, there will be two forces in the x axis, and they are both pointing opposite the direction of motion. That's why the object slows down. The object slows down because all the forces are pointing in opposite direction to the motion. That's why it's slowing down. For the y-axis, you can see that there is two forces, one pointing up, this, up, up, one pointing down. So they should balance each, out, each other out because uh, you're at rest in the y component. Okay, so let's find some of fx and some of fy. Some of fx here, um, what you have here is just fk pointing down the slope, okay? You can choose to call it negative FK. You can choose to call it positive FK. I don't think it's a big issue. But <clears throat> if you follow the Newton's law, uh, Newton's law method of doing things, if we have some FX, we usually determine the direction of acceleration, right? Okay, if it's not equal to zero, we determine the direction of acceleration. Direction of acceleration is pointing this way. That's why it's slowing down because the motion is opposite the direction of acceleration. That's why it's slowing down. So acceleration is pointing this way. So we usually take all the forces in the same direction as acceleration as positive. All the forces opposite the direction of acceleration as negative. So this one FK here is same direction as acceleration. So this is positive. W sine 35 will also be 
positive as well. There's no forces in the opposite direction of the acceleration, so there will be no negative forces over here for some effects. Okay, we can further expand this equation to become mu k multiplied by m. That's the equation for kinetic friction. And we can expand the weight to become mg and sine 35 degree. Okay, we are technically stuck over here already, but we can move on to find sum of fy first. Sum of fy over here is equals to that's normal and that's mg cos 35 degree. So the uh, we know that one side will be called positive, one side will be called negative. But because we know that the parcel is not flying up in the air, the parcel is not entering the inclined plane, the parcel is actually at rest in the y component. Because the parcel is at rest in the y component, we know that sum of fy is equal to zero. Okay, but at the same time, we know that sum of fy consists of us having normal and weight cos 35 pointing in opposite direction. So because of that, we know that n minus mg, let me expand it to become mg cos 35 degree. is equals to zero. That's why normal is equals to mg cos 35 degree. Okay, again, uh, this weight here, I expand it to become mg. What I know is that because this is equals to this, I equate them together, then I shift the mg cos 35 to the right hand side. So now I know that my normal is equal to mg cos 35. Why is this important? Because I can substitute this normal here back into this equation. And now the equation will transform to become mu k mg cos 35 degree plus mg sine 35 degree. Okay, this is quite interesting because it allows us to see that we can actually factorize out the mg. And now mu k is 0 0.30 as specified in the diagram over here. So this will be 0 0.30 cos 35 degree plus sine 35 degree. So this will be sum of fx and sum of fy will be equal to 0 as we mentioned earlier. Okay, so now we have our sum of fx, sum of fy. What we can do is we can take this sum of fx and sum of fy to find the magnitude and direction. Oops, writing. <laughs> We want to find the magnitude and direction of the net force. So how do you find the magnitude? The magnitude is just the uh, Pythagoras theorem combination of the x and y component, sum of fx, square and sum of fy squared. So if you open it up, uh, this will be so fx is mg 0 0.30. Ah, why am I making a lot of spelling mistake today? <laughs> Cos 35 degree plus sine 35 degree. So this is the x component square plus the y component is 0 square. So we know that this will cancel out become 0. You have a square root and you have a square. So the square root and the square will eventually cancel out. So you'll be left with the same thing, which is sum of f is equals to mg 0 0.30 cos 35 degree plus sine 35 degree. Okay, so this is the magnitude. How about the direction? You know that there is no y component over here. If there is no y component here, that means by the net force is just pointing in the x direction. There will be no y direction involved. The sum, the sum of force or the net force is pointing in the x direction. And because the x direction only has the left component, it has no right component, we know that the net force will be pointing down the slope. The direction is clear, it's down the slope.
Okay, why do we know down the slope again? Because sum of fy is equal to zero, there is no y component of force, you are left with x component only. The x component is very clear that every force in the x component is pointing down the slope. That's why the combination of it should be down the slope. So now once we have the magnitude and direction of the net force, what we do is we find the work done by the net force. Okay, next page. I don't have the diagram here. Uh, find work done by the net force. Okay, so work done by net force is the same thing as work total. So work total will be the net force dot s. Okay, if you open it up, then this will be that will be some f s cos theta. Okay, again our net force is pointing down the slope. That is our net force over here, but our displacement is going up the slope, right? We are going up the slope. So later, for the angle over here, we know that the angle between them will be 180 degrees. Okay, so the sum of force just now, we already mentioned, we already calculated it. The magnitude is mg, then you have our 0 0.30 cos 35 degree plus sine 35 degree. Okay, all of this is the magnitude of the uh, net force then the displacement how far does it move we don't know but we know that we want to calculate the maximum distance so let's write it as maximum displacement s max then you have our cost data the data here is cost 180 degree so now you know that cost 180 is equal to negative one so this should be negative uh, mg s max 0 0.30 cos 35 plus sine 35 why do i not why do i not calculate this value over here because i don't want any round up issue so i just bring along the 0 0.30 cos 35 plus sine 35 but i reach this point over here i have already said earlier at the start of the question that i'm going to relate this total work done here to the change of kinetic energy so right now I'm going to apply the work energy theorem and say that our work total here is equal to the change of kinetic energy. And because we know that change of kinetic energy is half mass V square minus U square, and we already know that the work total, we have to calculate it to become MGS max. 0 0.30 cos 35 degree minus sine 35 degree. When we reach this point, you already see that something convenient can be done. We see that there's M on both sides, therefore we can cross out the M on both sides. So right now we can proceed to our calculate uh, our substitution. So this will be negative 9.81 S max. 0 0.30 cos 35 degree minus sine 35 degree then you have our half final we know that the block move upwards until you reach a stop so the final is zero whereas the initial initial speed is three meter per second so we have already substituted everything in and I believe S max is the only unknown left. So if you use your calculator, I believe you will find that the maximum distance traveled by the block over here will be 0 0.560. Okay, so it's a long question. It's just A only. I'm not even solving B. So you can see that from question A, what I do is I find the total work done first. How do I find total work done? by finding some fx, some fy, sum them up for x, sum them up for y. I know that y will be equal to 0 because it's not going up, going down. So I straight away equate it with 0. But for x, I know that it's not equal to 0. So I have to add them up to find what is x. Then after that, I combine the x and the y using Pythagoras theorem to get this value, uh, these strings of terms over here. Once I get the magnitude and direction, I can use the magnitude and direction of the net force to determine the work done. 
I know that the net force is opposite the direction of the displacement because it's slowing down uh, its opposite direction so 180 degree over here from there I get the expression for the total work done and what I do is I equate the expression for total work done with the change of kinetic energy and with a bit of substitution I'm able to get the maximum displacement traveled by the parcel up the plate and it's 0.560 meter. Okay, I'll continue with question B in the next video. Thank you.